So, today we are going to discuss solution and we are going to discuss homogeneous solution. Homogeneous solution. The homogeneous solution is where uh, composition composition of uh, component present in the solution is uniform throughout the solution. Okay. So, let us first define what is solution. So, there are there is sol solute present and there is solvent present the component which is present in large quantity present in excess present in large quantity is called solvent and other component other components are called solute so there could be more than one other components in a smaller quantity they will be called solute in a binary solution we have a, a solvent and a solute okay so to specify a solution we need to talk about composition and today's lecture is going to be about how to spe specify composition of a given solution there are many ways to specify composition and we are going to discuss them one by one First of all, of them is mass percentage. So, as the name suggests, it is the mass of the component in the solution. divided by total mass of the solution and we have to multiply it by 100 to convert into percentage. Okay, let us take an example 10 percent glucose in water. that would mean 10 gram of glucose plus 90 gram of of water to give me 100 gram of 10 percent aqueous glucose solution. So, I think this is straightforward. The another way to specify the composition is volume percentage. So, I just have to uh, replace mass with volume, volume percentage. So, volume of the component in the solution and total volume of the solution. So, this is the definition of volume percentage. Let us take a, an example. So, 10 percent ethanol solution in water. It means 10 ml of ethanol the alcohol plus n of water so that we prepare total of 100 ml of solution. 
So the key word over here is N of water. If I mix 10 ml of ethanol with 19 90 ml of water is not necessarily going to give me 100 ml of solution. It could be slightly different from 100 ml. So, I have to add n of water so that the total volume becomes 100 ml. So, that would be 10 percent ethanol solution in water. Okay. So, the next unit to be discussed is mass by volume. So, we have already discussed mass by mass that is mass percentage, volume by volume that is volume percentage and next one is mass by volume. Mass by volume. So, that is mass of the component in the solution in 100 milliliter of solution. So, this would be mass of the of the component in the solution and total volume of the solution that would be mass by volume and uh, okay, this would be mass by volume. In case some uh, component is present in trace quantity, it is present in a very very minute amount, then we need a uh, there is a convenient unit to express the composition is ppm. The full form of ppm would be part per million. So, th the definition of this unit is uh, part of the num part of the component parts of the component divided by total parts to convert into per million i have to multiply by 10 power 6 so for an example uh, that uh, in the sea water oxygen is usually dissolved, it remains it is there to support the marine life and we know usually 6 into 10 power minus 3 gram of oxygen is present in 1 liter of sea water. So, the density of sea water is uh, uh, 1030 gram per liter. So, weight of 1 liter water is 1030 gram. So, if I want to calculate part per million, I have to parts of the component. So, that would be how many parts in this case? kg. So, that would be part of the component of oxygen that is 6 into 10 minus 3 divided by total parts. So, that is 1030 gram into 10 power 6. So, if we do the calculation, we will get answer as 5.8 ppm. It means 5.8 gram of O2 in 10 power 6 gram of water, sea water or 5.8 microgram of O2 in 1 gram of water. This ppm, this parts can be expressed as uh, volume. So, that would be volume by volume, how much what volume of this com this component is present in uh, in a 10 power 6 liter of total volume. So, that would be volume by volume, we can have mass by volume and we can have mass by mass. We have calculated concentration of oxygen in sea water in ppm in mass by mass concentration in it. Okay. Next, 
very important unit with respect to this particular chapter is mole fraction. So, we are next going to discuss mole fraction and usual symbol used for mole fraction is x. So, for component A mole fraction of component A in the solution will be defined as moles of A plus total number of moles. If this is a binary solution then there is a two component A and B present then x A would be simply N A plus N B. And similarly, I can write the mole fraction of component B. So, that would be moles of B divided by N A plus N B that is total number of moles and it will be trivial to prove that x a plus x b equal to 1. So, this is for binary solution if there is a more than two components are present in the solution then mole fraction of ith component would be given by moles of ith component divided by total number of moles of each and every component. And again it will be uh, not difficult to prove that summation over all the mole fraction would be equal to 1. Okay. Next we are going to discuss very important unit called molarity. Okay. And this unit is defined as moles of solute in solution divided by volume of of solution in liter. Okay. Let us take an example 0 0.25 molar NaCl aqueous solution the solution which is prepared in water it is a aqueous solution would mean that we have dissolved 0 0.25 moles of NaCl in 1 liter solution. This is very important 1 liter solution not 1 liter of solvent. If I dissolve 0 0.25 moles of NaCl in 1 liter water, it is not necessary, it is going to give me 0 0.25 moles uh, molar uh, NaCl solution. Because by adding 0 0.25 moles of NaCl in 1 liter water, it is going to change the volume of, uh, of this solution. It may be very minute change. For all the practical purpose, I can still can consider the 0 0.25 moles in 1 liter as 2 as 0 0.25 molar solution, but strictly speaking, it is not a 0 0.25 molar uh, solution. If it is a concentrated solution, then we have to make sure that we are adding 0 0.25 moles of NaCl, I am sorry, it is concentrated, then we are adding number of moles in 1 liter solution. So, basically we are going to add enough water to the solution so that the total volume becomes 1 liter. So, over here I am going to take 0 0.25 moles in a graduated flask and I am going to add enough water that the total volume becomes 1 liter. It is not 0 0.25 moles in 1 liter water. Okay. So, next I uh, unit which we are going to discuss is molality. This is going to be very important when we discuss colligative property. Okay. The definition of molality is moles of solute in uh, weight of weight of solvent and that is in kg. 
so over here it's a volume of solution and over here it is a weight of solvent so for example one molar one molar kbr solution uh, in water aqueous solution so kbr solution which is prepared in water would mean one mole of kbr in one kg of water so it is one mole of kbr in one kg of solvent the weight of the solution is of course going to be 1 kg plus the molecular weight of kbr because we are adding one mole of kbr so again to emphasize this is the weight of solvent and over here it is the volume of solution not the volume of solvent okay to understand better let's attempt some exercise so we are going to attempt the in text exercise given in ncert book okay so let me read it out calculate the mass percentage of benzene c6h6 and carbon tetrachloride ccl4 if 22 g of benzene is dissolved in 122 g of carbon tetrachloride so the question is asking us to calculate mass percentage of benzene c6h6 and carbon tetrachloride if 22 g of benzene so weight of benzene let's say it's a component one so weight of benzene is 22 g and is dissolved in 122 g of carbon tetrachloride so second component is carbon tetrachloride and 122 g of this is used to prepare the solution and we are asked to calculate mass percentage okay let's go back to the definition of mass percentage mass percentage of a given component would be mass of the component divided by total mass and to convert it to percentage let's multiply by 100 okay so this is a straight forward problem so mass percentage of uh, c6h6 would be simply given by mass of benzene that is 22 g divided by total mass that would be uh, 122 plus 22 multiply by 100 so this would be equal to 22 divided by 144 so 15.3% and the mass percent of ccl4 can be simply calculated using either this formula or simply 100 minus 15.3 3 that would be 84.7 percent one can check if i just calculate uh, using the formula given that is mass of the component that is 122 divided by total mass 144 into 100 i'm quite sure you will get the same value okay so this is complete the problem but let's go one step further and uh, with the given data let's try to calculate Uh, uh, mole fraction. Okay, so what is the definition of mole fraction? Mole fraction is de uh, defined as mole fraction of component one is equal to moles of component one divided by total moles. That would be n one plus n two. Okay, so we are given mass. So from mass we need to convert it to the moles, and we should get the answers. Okay, let's see. so the component one is c6h6 so the molecular weight would be 72 plus 6 that would be 
78. So, if I divide this thing by 78, I should get uh, n 1 moles of component 1. The second component is CCL 4. So, molecular weight would be approximately 12 and atomic weight of chlorine is approximately 35.5 multiplied by 4. So, 71, 142. So, that this would be 154. So, if I simply divide this thing by 154, that will give me moles of component 2. And if I just plug in this information, I should get the answer. Okay, let me simplify this first. So, 22 divided by 78, I get 0 0.28, 0 0.28 and 122 divided by 154, 0.79 moles. This is this unit is in a moles. Okay, now we have all the information required to complete this problem. So. Uh, mole fraction of benzene component 1 would be simply 0 0.28 divided by 0 0.28 plus 0 0.79, 0 0.26 and of course, I can use the similar formula for calculating mole fraction of component 2 or I will simply can calculate it by just using this information 1 minus x 1 and that would be 74.74. Okay. So, this completes this problem. Okay. Let us try another problem from the index question that is 2.3. Calculate the molarity of each of the following solution A 30 gram of cobalt nitrate hydrated in 4.3 liter of solution B 30 ml of 0 0.5 molar H2SO4 solution diluted to 500 milliliter. Okay. So, the question is asking us to calculate molarity. So, the solution A is 30 gram of this compound cobalt nitrate dot 6 H 2 O in 4.3 liter of solution. So, volume of solution is given as 4.3 liter. This is the volume of solution. So, we are asked to calculate molarity again going back to our ABCD. Uh, basics. So, that would be the definition of molarity would be moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter. Okay. So, volume of solution is given right here. So, that is not a problem. We need to calculate moles of solute. So, to calculate moles of solute, we need to divide this uh, weight of solute by molecular weight of this solute. So, let us use the uh, periodic table to find out the molecular weight of uh, atomic weight of cobalt that would be 58. 0.93 that is atomic weight of cobalt nitrate. So, 14 plus uh, 3 oxygen 48. So, 14 plus 48 62 multiply by 2 124 and 18 multiply by 6 108. Okay. And total if we add it would be Two ninety point nine three. So moles of solute is simply going to be thirty divided by two ninety point nine three. So we have all the information. Now I can plug in uh, 
we have moles of solute put it in there volume of solution just put it in there and we get the answer. So, the moles of solute N 2 would be 30 divided by 290.93. So, 0 0.103. So, the molarity is simply going to be 0 0.103 divided by uh, 4.3 in liter. So, the answer is going to be 0 0.024, 0 0.024 molar solution. Okay, let's discuss another problem 30 milliliter of 0 0.5 molar H2SO4 is diluted to 500 milliliter to 500 milliliter. So, in this solution of 30 ml we are adding enough water so that the total volume becomes 500 milliliter. So, the amount of or moles of H2SO4 present in this solution or this solution remains same because we are just adding water. So, there are two way of doing it. One is if we are diluting this solution from 30 to 500, then the molarity we can simply calculate by 0 0.5 into 30 divided by 500 that will give me the answer just to grasp the concept let us do it differently. So, we can grasp this concept better. So, how much H2SO4 is present in this solution? Okay. We are given the molarity that is 0 0.5 molar solution. We need to calculate moles of solute, moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter. So, in liter it would be 30 divided by 1000. Okay, moles of solute in this solution would be 0.5 would be multiplied by 30 divided by And the same number moles of solute is being used to prepare this solution. So, the concentration of this solution is going to be moles of solute which is given to us divided by volume. So, the concentration would be simply 0 0.5 into 30 by 1000 that is moles of solute divided by volume of the final solution that would be 500 by 1000. So, you see that we got the same answer uh, we got it earlier. Okay, Let us do a another problem from in text question. So, the question is calculate the mass of urea required in making 2.5 kg of 0 0.25 molar aqueous solution. So, he is asking to calculate the weight required for a given molar solution. The molality is given. So, let us look at the definition of molality first. Molality is moles of solute divided by weight of solvent. So, in this problem making 2.5 kg of urea solution. So, we are preparing 2.5 kg of solution and the solution is going to be 0 0.25 molar. The symbol used for molarity is small m. So, 0 0.25 molar urea solution and urea is NS2CONS2. This is the formula for urea. 
which will be needed later. So, if we uh, want to use this defini uh, definition of molarity, we have the moles of solute. Let us say we want to calculate moles of solute, which we can convert to later the weight of solute, weight of urea, just by multiplying the molecular weight of urea. And over here, we need weight of solvent. We are given the weight of solution, not the weight of solvent. So, we first we need to assume let us say the weight of solute, weight of solute is W, this is weight of solute. Okay. Then the weight of uh, let us say this is in kg, weight of solute in kg. Then weight of solvent weight of solvent is going to be 2.5 minus w in kg and moles of solute that we need for that i need the uh, molecular weight of urea that is 14 to 16 16 12 plus 16 so 16 16 16 48 plus 12 16 Okay. So, moles of solute in terms of W is going to be W which we assume in terms of kg. So, W into 1000 divided by 60. So, that is the moles of solute. Now, we can have all the information and we can put it in there. So, molality is 0 0.25 molar moles of solute is W into 1000 by 60 and weight of solvent is 2.5 minus W. So, we have a one equation and one unknown that is W. Simplifying this is a little bit, we get W divided by 2.5 minus W is equal to 0 0.25 into 660 by 1000. Point two five, so one point five into ten power minus two. Point zero one five. Okay, and let me put simply one. Adding numerator and denominator uh, will simplify the whole uh, equation that would be w 2.5 minus w plus w is equal to 0 0.015 1 plus 0 0.015 and answer is straightforward w is equal to 0 0.015 divided by 1.015 into 2.5. Okay. So, in, at the beginning itself, we could have uh, neglected W with respect to 2.5. Okay. That means, basically taking uh, neglecting this 0 0.015 with respect to 1. That should have been acceptable solution, but anyway, we can complete it without bothering about that. Otherwise, if we do the problem by making that approximation, we always have to check it later as we will see it later on. So, the answer becomes 0 0.015 multiplied by 2.5 divided by 1.015 equal to 0 0.37. 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री सेवन के जी और थर्टी सेवन ग्राम ऑफ यूरिया इज रिक्वायर्ड टू प्रिपेयर टू पॉइंट फाइव के जी ऑफ ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट टू फाइव मोलर सोल्यूशन ओके ऑल राइट ओके लेट्स डू द नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम ओके सो द नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम इज द सेम इन टेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन टू पॉइंट फाइव कैलकुलेट ए मोलैलिटी इज आस्किंग एस टू कैलकुलेट मोलैलिटी बी मोलैलिटी C mole fraction of Ki if the density of 20% mass by mass aqueous Ki is 1.202 gram per milliliter so uh we have a ki aqueous solution which is 20% mass by mass and mass by mass and the density of this solution is 1.202 g per liter okay so 20% mass by mass uh so this is a mass percentage the definition of mass percentage is mass of the solute divided by total mass so it's very clear that this solution contains 20 g of ki and 80 g of solvent solvent that is a uh, water because aqueous solution okay now we have to calculate those quantity one by one so molality mole definition of molality molality that will be moles of solute divided by weight of solvent so to calculate moles of solute since we are given weight of solute to calculate moles of solute i just need the molecular weight of potassium iodide okay let's use the periodic table again potassium is 39.5 one iodine is 126.9 so that gives me uh, 166.0 g per mole so moles of solute so moles of ki moles of ki in the solution is 20 g divided by uh molecular weight of ki that is 166 0.0 gram per mole so answer would be 20 divided by 166 that is 0.12 moles so the molarity is now straight forward so that would be moles of solute that is 0. One two divided by weight of solvent that is eighty gram, and we need the weight of solvent in kg. So we have to divide this whole thing by one thousand. So answer which come out to be one twenty by eighty. so this is a 
molar solution. Okay, what about molarity? Okay, so I do not think I will need this information anymore. So, let me use this space. Okay, molarity. The definition of molarity is moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter. Okay. So, moles of solute we have already calculated 0 0.12. What, if, what about volume of solution? We know the total weight of the solution that is 100 gram, we are given the density somewhere that is 1.202 gram. So, the weight, so volume would be weight that is 100 gram and the density is given. So, if I divide by density that is 1.202 gram per milliliter that will give me volume. So, answer is 100 divided by 1.202 milliliter. So, now we I have all the information required. So, this would be the molarity of this solution is going to be moles of solute which is given right here 0 0.12 volume of the solution which is given here 83.19 and I use that information and I will have my final answer 0 0.12 divided by 83.19, but I need to convert that milliliter into liter. So, that I just do by dividing by 1000 and answer is right there. So, let us do this calculation 120 divided by 83.19 ok. So, now the last quantity which we need to calculate is mole fraction. Okay. Let, let me now clean this part. So, mole fraction of Ki. would be moles of Ki divided by total moles. So, this is a binary solution. So, that means moles of Ki plus moles of water. So, of course, we moles of Ki is already given it is 0 0.12 moles of Ki plus moles of water. So, to calculate the moles of water, we already know the weight of water and we know the molecular weight of water. So, the moles of water is simply going to be 80 divided by 18. So, if one can one wishes they, they can uh, ignore 0 0.12 with respect to approximately 4.5, it would not be a such a big uh, error, but let us keep it since we have a calculator during the estimation we one need to uh, ignore those quantities. So, first let let us uh, okay, let us calculate that. Uh, 0.12 divided by in bracket 0 0.12 plus 80 divided by 18 bracket close 0 0.12. Zero point zero two six. So you can see that nearly in terms of mole fraction, ninety nine percent is just water. All right, let's do now some more problem from the end of the 
chapter. So, this is uh, problem number 2.7 from NCRT textbook from the end of the chapter. Okay, let me read it out. A solution is obtained by mixing 300 gram of 25 percent solution and 400 gram of 14 percent solution by mass. It is a solution by mass. Calculate the mass percentage of the resulting solution. Okay. Okay. So, we are mixing two solution. Uh, the solution is obtained by mixing 300 gram of 25 percent and 400 gram of 40 percent. So, these two solutions are added together and the resultant solution uh, we need to calculate for the resultant solution mass percentage. mass percentage. So, so in this first solution 25 percent of the solute is present and in this solution 40 percent of the solute is present. So, mass percentage is of this solute. So, mass of the component in the solution divided by total mass of the solution and 4 percent multiply by 100. So, in the resultant solution the component the sol uh, solute is going to come from these two individual solution. So, how much solute is present in the very first one? It is a 25 percent of 300 gram it is by mass. So, 25 into 300 divided by 100 that many gram of solute is present in solution 1 that is 75. Same way in the second solution the solute present is 400 into 40 by 100. So, that is 160 gram of solute present in the second solution. Okay. So, we know the mass of the solute, mass of this component that would be simply add these two. Now, we need total mass that is straightforward. We are adding 300 gram of solution 1, 400 gram of solution 2. So, total weight is obviously going to be 700 gram. So, now we have all the information and I can complete this problem. So, total solute present is going to be 235 divided by 700 into 100. So, the answer comes out to be approximately uh, 21, 25, 24, uh, approximately 33.6 percent. Okay. Okay, let us do one last problem for today, the next problem. Okay. 2.8. An antifreeze solution is prepared from 226 gram of ethylene glycol and 200 gram of water. Calculate the molarity of the solution. If the density of the solution is 1.072 gram, then what shall be the molarity of the solution? So, he is asking molarity and molarity. So, he is asking molarity and molarity. Okay. And the solution contains 222.6 gram of ethylene glycol, gram of ethylene glycol. 
n Two hundred gram of water of water, and the density of the resultant solution is one point zero seven two gram gram per milliliter, and uh, the formula for glycol is C two H six O two. Okay, so this is used as antifreeze. Okay, let's first try to calculate molality. Molality is defined as moles of solute divided by weight of solvent in kg. All right. So, first we need to calculate the moles of solute, we are given weight of solute. So, to convert this weight of solute to moles of solute, I need a molecular weight of the solute. So, that would be 24 plus 630 plus 32 62. So, the molecular weight is 62 gram per mole. So, the moles of solute would be simply 222.6 gram divided by 62 gram per mole. Okay, let me calculate this 222.6 divided by 62, 3.59. So, 3.59 moles of solute is present and the weight of solvent is given right there. So, this problem becomes straightforward. So, this is nothing but 3.59 divided by weight of solvent in kg. So, that would be that would be 0.2 kg. So, this solution is 3.59 divided by 2. So, this would be around 18 or 17.95 molar. 17.95 molar, it is a very high, highly concentrated solution. Okay. So, we have calculated molarity. Now, let us try to calculate molarity. The definition of molarity, let us go back to the basic definition. Moles of of solute divided by volume of solution. So, moles of solute we already know is 3.59 mole. Now, we need to calculate volume of solution. For that, we need to use this information. We need to calculate what is the total weight. The total weight we are since we are mixing this many ethyl ethylene glycol, these many gram of water. So, total weight is simply going to be just add this up and that would be 422.6 gram and divide that by density 1.072 gram per milliliter and that will give me volume of the solution. Okay, let us calculate that. So, answer comes out to be 394.2 milliliter. So, now we have all the information required to calculate molarity. So, moles of solute is right there 3.59. Volume of solution is right here, but we need volume of solution in liter. So, this would be simply 0.394 and if we do this calculation, we will get the molarity that is 3.59, 3.394. So, 9.11.
9.11 molar solution. Okay, that's where we will end today's class. Thank you.